Now, one of the great things about Home Assistant is that you can add almost any device and control it from a single centralized dashboard. You can build automations that bring these various devices together in harmony. Doesn't that sound like the dream? That's the dream. <laughs> really? That's the dream. Well, what about devices that don't support Home Assistant? Mm. Or that the talented and intrepid developers haven't found a way to get integrated? In the 2023.1 release of Home Assistant, they've now added the ability to do some basic interactions with your Google Assistant, meaning you now have limited control over those devices that are only available in the Google Home app. So stick around as we take a look at the new Google Assistant SDK integration, examine the options it provides, take a look at what it doesn't provide, and show some examples of using devices that I would love to have integrated with Home Assistant. Let's check it out. Now quickly, let's go over what this integration gets you. If you're like me, and you're steeped in the Google Assistant universe through your smart speakers, displays, TVs, Android phones, and even watches, then you always look for a compatible with Google Assistant sticker when purchasing IoT tech. So this new integration has two main features. The first allows you to send most text-based commands to your devices. So if you have a vacuum that you can start and stop via Google Assistant, you can send that same command as a text string in Home Assistant. So for example, you can send the commands of start, stop, on, off, open, close, change color, etc. The second feature allows you to send a broadcast command via Home Assistant. So in our house, we use this to tell the kids it's time to eat or to send a message to bring more toilet paper to the downstairs bathroom. This has happened more than once. Typically, this is employed using a voice command at one of our Google Assistant devices. Or if you're outside the house, you can use a voice command in the Google Assistant app on your phone to send the broadcast. You can also send a broadcast via a text command on your phone and it will be read out using the Google text-to-speech voice. Broadcast from Ryan was sent from my phone. Now the broadcast part of this integration emulates that last feature, the text-to-speech. It allows you to send some text and have it read out over all of your devices. You can even target a specific device around your house. Now this has one distinct advantage over using the built-in text-to-speech in Home Assistant Media Player. It won't kick you out of whatever music or audio you're listening to. It'll either pause or duck the audio, play the broadcast, and then resume playing. That's much more convenient than the media player text-to-speech. And just as a quick side note, for those of you who have been using Home Assistant for a while, you may have seen a project in the past called Google Assistant Relay that did something very similar. I believe that project is no longer maintained or supported, so this seems like the spiritual successor to that project. If any of you have used the Relay project, please let me know in the comments below if you see any feature differences between the two integrations. Now, the list of requirements for this project are quite simple. Of course, you're going to need to have a Google Assistant device in your home. As long as you have a single smart speaker or display, you should be good to go. Second of all, you're going to need to be on Home Assistant 2023.1 or later. Finally, the developer of the underlying Python project that Home Assistant is using to communicate with the Google Cloud says that your targeted Google Assistant devices and Home Assistant need to be on the same network or subnet. Also, IPv6 needs to be disabled. We'll look at other limitations here in just a minute. Real quick, just as a reminder, if you do find value in this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. That always helps others find this guide. Of course, make sure you're subscribed and have the bell ring so you get my latest videos when they come out. All right, so let's look at the limitations of this integration. So looking at the current limits of the project as of 2023.1, because they could be fixed or updated here in the near future. The first item is of course, this all relies on the cloud. Your assistant devices, target devices, and home assistant all need to be able to talk to the various clouds for this to work. The second item is these are one-way commands, meaning you cannot query devices for their status. So you're kind of shooting in the dark when sending commands to lights and switches. You can't see if they're on or off or what color they happen to be turned to. Same thing with vacuums and covers. On the subject of covers and locks, if you have a device that requires a pin for you to lock, unlock, or open, this will not work because you're prompted for that code after you send the open command and there's no way for Home Assistant to reply back. You also cannot control media devices, so no sending play or pause commands to your various Google Homes. Also, you cannot tell the Google devices what to play. I really hope they figure out a way to do this because it would be great to be able to have Home Assistant play a particular playlist as part of an automation. Next, you can't kick off any routines or automations that are defined in the Google Home app it's not able to communicate with routines, similar to how it works on watches. And finally, you cannot get personalized results. So anything specifically tied to your account, not talking about devices, but information, it can't retrieve your information, obviously, so therefore it can't get you any personalized responses. So the main reason I wanted to work on this project was because I have a few devices scattered around my house that I wanna be able to control with Home Assistant and with automations. One of these devices that I haven't been able to find an integration for are the new Vaunt Home light strips. Vaunt Home reached out and sent me a few sets of these light strips to play around with. It was perfect timing because we were transitioning my twins from their toddler beds to the big boy Ikea loft beds. My twins absolutely love the LED lights that we put under my eldest's bed. If you remember from my Wise Light Strips video, we installed a basic Wise Light Strip under his bed. Well, the twins wanted one for themselves. 
So I decided to set them up with these LED strips. So quickly going over the features of the Vaunt Home LED strips. These of course are RGB LEDs. They come in two lengths, 16 and 32 foot. They're capable of over 16 million colors. You can control them with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And there's also a nice physical remote integrated right into the controller. This allows you to control the power, what color it's currently on, switching it in and out of music mode, and also adjusting the brightness, which is great for my twins so they can turn them on and off and change the colors and play with them. Like most LED strips, you can cut them to a custom length, or if you need to add an additional section, you can extend them with wire and solder. But please note, you cannot add more than the number of feet included in the box because of the power supply limitations. Now, as far as the app is concerned, you can do most of the basic items in here. You can schedule the lights to turn on or off for a specific color. You can customize the light show included with the music mode. You can create custom colors and add them into the rotation. You can create presets and custom scenes for your own custom color show. Of course, these integrate with most smart assistants like Google, Alexa, or even IFTTT. Now, these are only a single color per strip, which means you cannot individually address each LED, but the pro version is RGBIC, which I just found out that stands for RGB individually controlled. That's nice to know. But sadly, these light strips do not offer a built-in or custom Home Assistant integration. So that last item is what brought me to this integration. So let's head back into the office and take a look at how to set it all up. All right, so now for the fun part. Let's go ahead and get this project set up here in Home Assistant. So if you'd like to follow along, I've got a link right here below to the actual instructions from Home Assistant on how to set up this official integration. But the first thing we're gonna need to do is head out to the Google Cloud Console and get our client ID and secret. Now, of course, if you're doing this project, I assume you already have a Google account because you're using Google Assistant. Why else would you be this far in the video? So we're gonna to need to use that Google Assistant to sign in and set up a cloud developer account and then use that to retrieve our keys. So we need to head over to the Google Cloud Console, which you can find this URL here below, of course, in the description. We're gonna be going to console.cloud.google.com and then go ahead and sign in with the Google account that you are currently using to run your assistants. So this has to be the same account that you are running with your Google assistants that are signed in in your house. This is the main account, not one of your sub accounts. So once you get signed into that, we need to create a new project. So to do that up at the top here, if you have an existing project, but if not, we can go ahead and click a new project and we'll call this one Home Assistant GA SDK. You don't need to put in any more information here. Just click create. We'll watch up here in the corner until it's finished setting up the project. So once it's fully set up, then we'll need to select it from the project list above. So click this right here and we're gonna find Home Assistant GA SDK. Now we'll go ahead and click on the navigation menu on the side and then go to API and services. Once we're in here, we need to complete the OAuth consent screen. This is required for any application that's going to go into production, which we need to be in production, so that way we can use our keys to retrieve information. Don't worry, we're not sending this out to other people, this is just for you to access. Click the OAuth consent screen. We're gonna select the user type of external. Click create. Go and give it an app name, this can be anything you want. User support email. You're gonna select the email account associated with this Google account. Leave everything else blank. And then down here under developer contact information, put your email address in there again. Click save and continue. We don't need to add any scopes because it's going to assume that Google Assistant is there, but we will check it in a minute because I've had problems with certain APIs not being activated. So we don't need to do anything here. Click save and continue. We're not gonna set up any test users. Click save and continue. All right, so the last step that we need to do in the OAuth consent screen page is we need to go over here where it says publishing status and where it says testing, we need to publish the app and go ahead and click confirm. Again, this is just publishing it for you to use, not for the general public to use. So now, before you exit out of the screen and close out of the Google Cloud Console, we need to add one more thing. So let's click on the navigation menu, go to APIs and services and say enabled APIs and services. For some reason, this isn't in the instructions. I don't know why, but we want to go up here and we want to search for Google Assistant. So under the marketplace, you see Google Assistant API. We'll click that and ensuring we're selected on our current project, we need to click enable. If you don't enable the Google Assistant API, then you, you will not be able to issue commands. And this can be done at any time. It doesn't need to be done during setup. So if you do forget this step, you can always go back. And now that that's done, let's go ahead and create our credentials. So we're gonna click on credentials right here. Go up to create credentials and we're gonna do OAuth client ID. So under application type, we're gonna select web application and under web client, we're just gonna call this home assistant. Now one key bit of information is actually on the instructions for the SDK. We scroll down here under the generate client ID and client secret we need the URI, which is provided for Home Assistant. So just copy it directly from the instructions. So that's this my-homeassistant.io slash redirect slash OAuth. So we'll copy that link and we're going to click add URI and paste that in here. 
Then we just need to hit create. So now we have our OAuth information. Now, of course, this is blurred out on the screen because if this is key information. If anybody had a hold of these keys, it's just like having your password. They can get in and make changes to whatever is in scope for this project. So be very careful. Make sure you keep this secure. Of course, if you're putting this into your Home Assistant instance, it's gonna be stored locally. Nothing to worry about there. So this is the ID and secret we're gonna need for the Google Assistant SDK integration. So we'll go ahead and just leave that here. You can also download the JSON and save it somewhere safe. But for now, we're just gonna leave it here. We're gonna need it in the next step. All right, so we need to now jump into our integrations page in our Home Assistant instance. One quick tip is if you hit the C key on your keyboard, when you're in your Home Assistant instance, it brings up the search bar. This is similar to like Spotlight or Alfred on Mac, where you can quickly search for something that you wanna to jump to. So it's much faster than clicking through the menus. So we're gonna look for integrations, hop to that. Then we're gonna click add integration. And then we're gonna search for Google. Now they've nested all of the different integrations by the company that provides it. So we're gonna click Google, and then we're gonna find Google Assistant SDK. Make sure you're using the SDK version, not the regular version, because there is two different integrations. So click SDK. So we've copied and pasted our client ID and client secret from the Google dashboard into here. So now we need to click the add button, and then it's gonna ask you which account that you use to sign into this. So we're gonna click that account that we use to set up the keys. And then it wants to give permission to access your Google Assistant. So we'll click continue. And then you need to put in your My Home Assistant instance, which the, either the internal or external URL for your Home Assistant, which if you've already done an integration using the My Home Assistant feature, this will already be pre-filled in, but I had to reset this browser. So you can just put in your external URL if you're using that, or if it's if you're using local only, you can use your local URL, colon eight, one, two, three. So we'll click link account and it's successful. So now the Home Assistant SDK has been set up and installed in our instance. Before we jump into how to use it, real quick, I just got bit by this, I spent 30 minutes, I screwed up the OAuth setup and got an error message and basically was stuck, I could not continue. And I had reached the end of my rope, so I went to reach out to somebody on the Discord server and literally, as I was getting ready to ask my question, Discord user Clarjohn1 actually asked the exact same question and he solved it as well. So big shout out to them for posting that and answering how they solve the problem. So if you do run into a problem and you screw up somehow and you continue running through this access denied error, the solution to that is to go to the three dots in the corner and click on application credentials. Right here then you'll see your Google Assistant SDK stored OAuth client. So if you have any problems with it, you can go through here and delete it and start the whole thing over again. Thank you again to that Discord user for answering his own question. All right, so now we've got the integration set up, let's hop into the developer tools and I'll show you how to use it. So now we're in developer tools, we're gonna go under services and then the first service we're gonna use is the one to control devices. So we're gonna to go to Google, Google Assistant SDK send text command. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to target a specific device that is only available in Home Assistant. So I've got the two light strips upstairs under my twins' beds. So we're gonna target the one called Thomas's bed. So we're gonna send the command turn on Thomas's bed. So I click call service, it's gonna take a second. And now if we look in the app, we'll see that that bar is now green indicating that the light is on. So let's set this to Let's do another command. Set Thomas's bed to blue. Call service. Now if you look at the screen, it's turned blue. And then of course you could say set Thomas bed to 50%. And now it's at 50%. So you see you can send simple commands, turn off, turn on, set light to a certain color, set light to a certain brightness. Those are very easy to do. So that's how you send the text command. This is something you just have to play with and get the right set of commands set up for your particular system. So in the future here, I'm gonna look and try to set up a template light device that allows you to use the Home Assistant UI to then send one of these Google commands, but that's gonna take me a little while to write. So now to do the broadcast messages, all we need to do is do the same thing. So now instead of using the Google Assistant SDK, it's a different command. We're gonna scroll down here to notify, and there's a notify Google Assistant SDK. So we'll click that, and now, of this menu, we only care about two fields, the message and the target. So the message is of course whatever message you're wanting to send. Um, and if you click call service now, it's gonna broadcast to all your assistant devices at the exact same time. If you wanted to target a specific device, you could, you could click this box here and then type in the name of your device. So office display. That's my Google Assistant that's right here behind the camera. So I click call service and give it a second, you'll hear the broadcast message come through. Incoming broadcast, it says, is a test. And it'll actually display it on screen if you have a display. So you, know, you can send this broadcast and then if you're playing music, it's gonna wait a few seconds and then it'll continue and resume where you were in whatever music you're listening to or audio source. So again, that's much better than using the text-to-speech because text-to-speech actually blocks the screen and takes over completely. 
All right, so now let's see how this works in an automation. So real quickly, I'm gonna build a quick manual automation that can be triggered automatically to tell my boys it's time to go to bed and also turn on their LED lights to 1%. So for trigger, obviously we're gonna use a time trigger and they typically go to bed at 8.30 each night. So under actions, we're gonna do call service and then we're going to look for the Google Assistant SDK send text command. So the first command we wanna do is turn on Thomas bed to 1% so we can combine those commands into one. And then I wanna set the light to blue. So no matter what color it is, I wanna set it to blue. So then our second command is set Thomas bed to blue. So we're gonna duplicate both of these for the other bed. So we'll change this one to Theo's bed. All right, so we have the four commands set to turn on, to set the light to 1%, which will go ahead and turn on the light. And then for each of the lights, we have them set to blue. And then finally, we're gonna call a service. We're gonna call notify Google Assistant SDK. And again, the two fields we need, we're gonna do the message that's gonna say, it is time for bed boys. And then for the target, we're going to set office display. All right, so we're gonna click save. And now that's, so let's go ahead and test it. So we're gonna click on the three dots and click run. So now both boys are on 1% and are set to blue. Here in a second, we should get our, oh, there's our broadcast. Incoming broadcast. It says, it's time for bed boys. So as we can see, it's not the fastest thing in the world because it has to make those commands and there's a bit of a delay between each. So just expect the probably about 10 second delay per command. but. It works, you can actually control devices. And for most of these things, I'm only gonna do them once a day, turn them on, turn them off, that sort of thing. So there we go. Now that we've seen, we can set up any device that supports a Google Assistant. So there we go. Now any device that's supported by the Google Home app or Google Assistant for control, we can now use inside of Home Assistant. I'm hoping here in the future that the developers find a way to be able to retrieve data back from one of the sensors and also be able to more closely integrate things like lights. So have them develop the templates so that you can just go ahead and define a device like a virtual light and have it send those commands. So I'm gonna work on that probably over the coming weeks. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'll be happy to make a follow-up short discussing that and post those examples to my blog. So there you go. Again, if you found this video helpful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more videos coming up over the next year. I should hopefully be more consistent this year. So. If you'd like to see more Home Assistant projects, click on this playlist right here. And as always, if you haven't already, subscribe by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, I'll see you on the next video.